Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So in uh, this lecture, I have to speak a little bit about uh, uh, what are the uh, routing protocols that we have uh, on uh, the networks and what are the different types that we have. Then I have to speak about the link state routing protocol because OSPF works on the link state. So it's going to be on the theoretical part now, speaking about what are the different types of routing we have on our network and to dig more into the link state routing protocol. So, we do have two types of routing protocol. We have what we call them EGP and IGP. So I can write them here, EGP and IGP. EGP stands for Exterior Gateway Protocol and IGP Interior Gateway Protocol. So what is the difference? You as an administrator, you are responsible for your autonomous system. What is autonomous system? Autonomous system is a set of routers under the administration of one administrator. So that means that you have, for example, a bank that you are an IT administrator for that bank. So all the routers that you are responsible for fit inside the autonomous system, which is your autonomous system, because you do have access to all those routers. So you have control on all of those routers. So that's the definition of the autonomous system. So in our case, we have, for example, this autonomous system. Let's say that it is a school over here. And I want to run the routing protocol inside this school. So the routing protocol that we are going to run inside this school, our routing protocol from the IGP, which is the interior gateway protocol. So something to think of like RIP. RIP is one routing protocol, which is an old one. And uh, this one can work interior, so inside our uh, autonomous system. Uh, on Cisco, we have EIGRP, so this is Cisco proprietary. It doesn't work on any other equipment, so that's also uh, interior. We have OSPF, that's something also interior. That's a routing protocol which works inside the autonomous system. And we have uh, intermediate system, intermediate system, and that also works inside the autonomous system. So all of those routing protocols, they work inside the autonomous system. That means inside the network itself, inside the school, inside the bank, inside the hospital. So inside the same autonomous system, you have to run those routing protocols, which are interior routing protocols. Now, let's say that you are now administrator and uh, you for this uh, autonomous system and your company made a uh, partnership with another company or let's say that you are an isp and you are connected to another isp so it's your uplink so in this case you need to make routing between those two isps the only routing protocol that you can use actually here you have to use the exterior because then it's between two autonomous systems so we have to use exterior routing protocol or gateway, gateway protocol, and uh, this uh, protocol which you are going to use, the routing protocol, is BGP. So BGP is the only routing protocol that we can do it between two autonomous systems. So that means what? That means that BGP is the routing protocol of the internet. So without BGP, we wouldn't have uh, now internet and you wouldn't be able now to watch my video. So the BGP is the routing prot protocol which glues all the uh, autonomous system together, then we have the internet. All right, so now we understand we have uh, the IGP, we have the EGP. IGP works inside the autonomous system. EGP works between the autonomous system. And I have given you examples. RIP and OSPF, those are open standards. So you can see them on Juniper, you can see them on um, Cisco, you can see them on Mikrotik, on Huawei, on all those uh, routing or routers uh, uh, brands, you can see those routing protocols. Now, inside IGP, so when we are speaking inside the autonomous system itself, the routing protocol working inside the autonomous system, we have two types. We have the distance vector and we have the link state. So that means RIP and the EIGRP and OSPF and ISIS they can be either distance vector or they can be link state. So which one are the distance vector? For example, RIP is distance vector. Link state, uh, we have OSPF. You can see it uh, behind me, but you it's OSPF. You, you know what, uh, what I'm writing. And you have ISIS, that's also link state. So what is the difference between distance vector and link state? That's something I have to explain to you 
in the upcoming slide. So here is the explanation of the routing protocols, which are distance vectors, and the routing protocol, which are the link states. So first, let's speak about which protocol works on a distance vector. We said RIP, right? And link state, we said OSPF and ISIS. Let's do it OSPF over here. So OSPF is part of the link state routing protocol. That means we, if we understand how link state think, then we can understand how OSPF thinks also. Same for the distance vector. Actually, there is EIGRP that I have showed it to you before, and I said that's Cisco proprietary. EIGRP is not a distance vector and also nor a link state uh, routing protocol. So Cisco call it a hybrid routing protocol because it takes the best of the distance vector and the best of link state. And what Cisco they have done, they just put all those good things together and they created EIGRP to be the uh, best routing protocol in case you have Cisco environment because that's only works on Cisco product. Some people also call it advanced distance vector because we will see that distance vector is very simple. So Cisco made it the name as advanced distance vector. That means it is somehow a distance vector route protocol, but it is advanced one. That means it has advanced features. But that's out of scope of this course. We are not going to speak anything about the IGRP. Now let's talk about the difference between the distance vector and the link state. On the distance vector, each router will send the entire routing table to uh, each other as an update. That means what? In case you have, for example, two routers connected like this, and each of the router, they have a network. So router one tells to router two about that network and router two tells router one about that network. So they put it inside the routing table. Now, what's going to happen that every 30 seconds, this router will send his whole routing table to that router every 30 seconds. And how he send it in case you are using, for example, RIP version one, he send it as a broadcast. Can you imagine every 30 seconds a broadcast going inside our network, which is very bad. In case you are using RIP version two, it's sent as multicast, which is also not good. It's also bad. Same does also that one. Every 30 seconds, he sent the entire route table. So say that those two networks are operational working. They are not down but still the routers will send the update every 30 seconds. Do we really need to send every 30 seconds if the network is not down? Actually not, but that's how the distance vector works. All right, so every 30 seconds, this has be, is being sent. Now, the link state is different. So if you have OSPF configured over here, and this router tells about this network to router two, and this one tells about his network to router one, then in case the network is converged, means that there is no any change then they don't send the updates every six seconds. No, they just do nothing. That's the difference on link state compared to the distance vector. So when do they send an update? They send an update, say that router one, this network goes down. Then once the network goes down, then this router will tell router two, hey router two, I told you before that I have a network here connected to me, but this network is down. Please remove it from your routing table and it will remove it. So it's like an incremental update. So that's what it says here. Updates are incremental and entire routing table is not sent as an update. Now on the, the distance vector, we see that the, they send, as I said, the periodic update by default is every 30 seconds, as I have explained, while the link state, they only send the updates as triggered. So once the network is down or something has changed to the network, then they just, once there is anything happening, then they trigger the, the update. So send it and it's not periodic. Now, the third uh, difference between distance vector and uh, link state is that, for example, if you have RIP configured, say that you have this network. So you have a couple of routers all connected to each other, right? So this is router one, two, three, four, and so forth. All right. Now, router one, if you have distance vector like RIP, he doesn't see the whole network, right? He just don't see the whole network. It's not uh, how the uh, distance vector works. While on the link state, that's something we are going to see in OSPF, then he will see the whole network. So router one knows that there is a router connected here, there is this network on it, this network on that router, and so forth. So you can see the whole map of the network. So that's something also a very big difference between the distance vector and the link state. So in distance vector, routers do not have end-to-end -end visibility of the entire network, while on link state, routers have 
visibility of the entire network in that area only. Of course, we'll speak about area later. Now, the good thing on distance vector, of course, there are always good things, is that it's easy to configure. It's not very hard to configure a distance vector routing protocol like, like RIP. While on SPF, which is the link state routing protocol, then it requires expertise and knowledge to configure it. So that's something we have to bear in mind. So once you have to learn OSPF, you will see that we should have some knowledge to understand how OSPF thinks to be able to configure it. Otherwise, it's not easy. All right. Now, the drawback of the distance vector, it has or it can have routing loops. So if you have RIP configured, for example, you may end up having loops. Of course, there are some techniques on RIP to avoid the loops to happen, something like the split horizon, the positioning reverse, all of those are to avoid having the routing loops, but that doesn't mean that routing loops will not happen. So on distance vector, you will end up sometimes to ha having routing loops, especially once your network becomes bigger, then you have bigger probability that you have loops if you use the distance vector. While on link state, there is no loops, no routing loops at all. And finally, the examples here, that is RIP on distance vector and on link state or SPF and IS, IS. So those are the difference between the link state and distance vector. That is all what I wanted to explain in this lecture. Again, the, we do have the uh, uh, EGP and IGP. EGP means between autonomous system routing protocol that we uh, make, which is BGP and IGP is inside the autonomous system itself, like OSPF, RIP, ISIS and from Cisco you have EIGRP and I have explained to you the difference between the link state and the distance vector of course OSPF works on link state so that's why we have now to dig more inside the link state to understand it then we can understand OSPF so this is all what I wanted to show in this first lecture I hope it was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture